It started right away this time. Welcome back to Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. I'm on a fucking roll with that title. I'm gonna start I'm gonna say it faster and faster each episode until you can't even understand me. And then we're gonna get to the next game and you're gonna start saying it's justice for all. <laughs> no brute. That's not the one we're playing anymore, idiot. Anyway, court. What? Ansica. <sighs> That's Phoenix, actually. <sighs> Soon though. How did I get into this mess? That's far enough. You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'll have you know. What the fuck? <laughs> what? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. Uh, but, but I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. Oh, oh no. Smash! What the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> I've had this dream before, some place, some time ago. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. You had that dream in the first case. Uh. Hello, this is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? Click. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. Now listen up, you better get Engard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you. Ever! Maya. Who is- Phoenix! Phoenix! Oh! Uh. <laughs> Me- Mia? <laughs> you sounded manly there for a second. Maya, how's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. I mean, uh, what? What am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. But you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here. Not anywhere. Ugh, that accursed end guard again. Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore. I mean it. You, you really mean, pal. Oh, come shoot. I'm really, really sorry. Oh, where are you? They let me join the investigation team, and we're, and we're chasing after the killer, pal. Then you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not going to give up. Gumshoe. Until the trial is over, until the verdict is handed down. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to do, do everything we can to find the killer. And we can get get my out. Then you can get get out and get and guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. It's true. I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that. So you had to do what do what do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. Stall, stall, stall. Oh, I've been trading for this <laughs> moment my whole fucking career. I have to make the trial last longer. If you go to Mr. Edgeworth with everything you got, then you two can, two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. 
You and Mr. A Edgeworth can do it. Discord. Discord, please. That's weird. Usually it freezes for me, too. Didn't freeze for you? Yeah. Nope. Hmm. It didn't freeze for me, either. Ah, this is Anson's fault. <laughs> well, it, my this is so... Oh, yeah, it just says so. That's all that's up right no. now. Okay, well, then... That seems odd. Okay, well, so... Believe in us. We're, go we're go going to give, give it all, all, all we've got. Just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Click. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you have it in abundance. The real Ace Attorney was the friends we made along the way? <laughs> yes. The real Ace <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, I know it. For once, he'll come through. <laughs> well, he has always come through when you've needed him. Court is now in session with the trial of Matt and God. Oh yeah, he, actually he saved Phoenix's life in the uh... The Global Studios case. He did too. Yeah. He came in. Got, he was at the ready. Yeah. <laughs> the defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being, what exactly Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder? That is to say, is she really conduct? Is she really conduct? Really connected to the crime itself? Nope. Mr. Edward, if you would please inform the court, a uh, court of today's proceeding. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Matt Engard, Mr. Engard, and then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm. Then you are saying that she is guilty after all. I'm not finished, Your Honor. I'm slurring my words. I'm a little drunk. I'm sorry. Damn, this case has been hard on everyone, huh? It's alright, you're not alone here. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. A assassin, you say? Yes, one Corita was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt Engard. Well, what a surprising turn of events! I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. You have a point. <laughs> I know what's going on this time. So I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can. At least until Maya's safe and sound. I wonder how the trial would turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Hey, buddy! Hey. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's... 
I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Powers, please. You don't need to put yourself down so much. Yeah, come on, buddy. You're like infinitely better than he'll ever be. <laughs> Sorry. Well, but I'm just kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? Yes. I I didn't know that. Um, but you know, you know, I didn't actually get to see that when I win. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Engard's room. Okay, sure. I want to preempt this by saying there's nothing personal when I press the shit out of every single one of your statements. I, I know, it's just what you do. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. He was talking with someone at first. <laughs> I thought it was- I talked to someone. At first, I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, and then I gave up and went back. <laughs> I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Shucks. What a nice guy. Hmm. Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Power's testimony. <sighs> and talking with the bellboy is no big deal, unless you remember who the bellboy was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If one assumes that the person Mr. Engard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy. But what are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Uh, looks like we're in another sticky situation. Is Cabell hanging out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just going to have to charge in head first, right? You smell a trap? All I smell is the faint scent of booze. Yep. <laughs> it begins. <laughs> <laughs> the defendant's room. Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor. Like a big brother, sort of. I wanted to say congrats. What's wrong? Why did you stop? M M Mr. Wright? What is it, man? You, you're going to try to trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> I know I'm just a 400 paid action star, but... You make more than I do! <laughs> I'm not the killer. Uh, no one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please don't drink me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. Every time? Witness? I will personally talk to the, talk to the defense at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. <laughs> Sorry. So you went to the defendant's room, and then? Hey, wait a minute! When and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? Hold it. Are you sure that was Matt Engard? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the nickel samurai mask then. 
If that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. And? What was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he, he was in a bellboyish uniform, and he had a ball of juice on a tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but... I don't think it was no... I don't think it was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um... Why did I think that, Mr. Wright? to know sorry but I can't remember right now <laughs> sorry <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to wait patiently on this one Holy. you saw the two of them the bellboy and the defendant together correct yeah the <laughs> oh boy I just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? What is on my back? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> what? Hmm? I just felt something crawl down my back and I reached back there and I don't know what the fuck was in my shirt, but <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. I started to shiver at the end of that line because I could feel it crawling down my back. Did, did, did you get it, whatever it is? I don't know. If I don't know what it was, how am I supposed to know? I shook my shirt out. Do, do you feel it? No! <laughs> okay! It's probably gone. It'll probably just eat you in your sleep. Um, you uh. know, I, I, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt... Well, he gave the bellboy a tip. Damn you for your friendly <laughs> practices, you son of a bitch! You well, son you of a bitch! actually know anything about Matt... <laughs> oh, Powers is like, yeah, he's such a dickhead. I'm surprised he gave yeah, that bellboy a tip. He gave him, Matt gave the man a tip! I bet he doesn't tip his waitresses either. Bastard! I'm... Seriously, though, tip your waitresses. <laughs> yes, please. Tip your waitresses. A tip? That's a perfectly normal thing to do. Unless you're in certain other countries, because apparently in some cases, like in Japan, for instance, it's actually kind of like insulting to tip. And like, you don't actually do that because they're just paid wages where that's already factored in. Imagine being paid a livable wage. Um, um, um imagine being paid a livable wage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little <laughs> salty about where I live. <laughs> yeah. So, how long did you watch the two of them? Uh, no more than a minute or two, I think. I had guessed that, yeah. That I'm gonna, in before, he says, who's your guest? And he's like, you, jackass. <laughs> Yes. So who are these guests you're talking about? Whoa. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. You guys, of course. You and my and Little Pearl. <laughs> I thought it would be really rude to say I burdened you guys if I disappeared on you. So I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. This is like squeezing water from a stone probably pointless to press further. Do you remember this incident? Did, did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Mind you, I had a lot of champagne, Mia. It was free! Free! <sighs> Maya was making <sighs> such a racket in her hyper state, too. I ended up focusing on her and the free champagne! I it see. Was, it was free, Maya, Mia. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. Free! I don't care. It was free. 
Oh, uh, shit, okay. Now to actual, like, information, I mean... The only thing I can think of is if you present the profile of John Doe. That's a good idea. Yeah. I, I think when he mentioned I just, the bellboy... Yeah. I, thought, I thought there was more than one thing where he mentioned bellboy. It was when you pressed... Oh, okay. First I thought it was the billboy. Okay. Uh. Nope. Nope. This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exa exactly are the evidence of the statement just now related? They are, are they? Not at they all. They just are. They just are. Mr. Wright, please take the Ugh. facts over before making accusations. I don't think that won me any points with the judge. Do you have to press one of the statements again? The defendant's room? Why did you go there? We said this already. Tor, grats. How do I do stop, Mr. Wright? What is it? You can corner me. You know you're not the murderer. I understand. We already know who did it. Okay, we just now need, you know. The neighbors are arguing outside. Yeah. Yeah, I hear it. I don't think the recording is getting it, so that's good. Yeah, you had to press the third statement after you had pressed the fourth statement. Right. Two. Three. <sighs> At first? What do you mean by that? Okay, we did this too. Yeah, normal normal bell boy. Why was that? Uh, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Hey, wait a second. Actually, Mr. Powers, only a few minutes ago you stated... Um, oh, wow, You know, wow. I did feel something weird. Fuck. <laughs> I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Uh... Ah! <laughs> That's it. You, you really know your job. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You read about the bellboy, right? Yes, Will, about the bellboy. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Uh, well, you see, that's <laughs> That's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how, how much it what was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? But that that's when <clears throat> that was something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got into his pocket. And that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't follow at all. Sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of his shocking moments I should ask about. Okay, who the fuck cares about the tip? Right? It's the face that matters. 
Because if we know what, he, what his face is, looks like, then we can be like, oh, it's this guy. And this guy was at the mansion, so... Yes, that does make sense. What was so shocking about the bellboy's face, Mr. Powers? Well, it wasn't exactly a boy. More like an old grabs. Um, I hope you know, you know, that discrimination towards old men is a no-no in my court. No, no, that's not what I meant at all. I knew you'd get me hung for this, right? <laughs> it's a, it's a smack in the middle of the guy's face. There's a line of stitches. A line of stitches? Yeah, it went straight, straight to the tippy top of his head to the bottom of his chin. Uh, almost like, like, like <coughs> almost like, like, if the thread snap, 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 all the stuff in his head would come spilling out. Uh, ah! He was there! At Engard's house! He was the butler! What is it, Mr. Wright? Uh, no nothing, Your Honor. So that means Engard was talking with the killer then. If that was to be exposed, Engard would be declared guilty in a blink. Phoenix, you have to play dumb here. Pretend you don't know anything. Yes, Chief. You sure you don't have anything you would like to say, Mr. Wright? Huh? Uh, what'd you just say, Your Honor? In one ear, out the other, you know. <laughs> See, you were correct, but you forgot that right now your goal is to stall. <laughs> Nothing, Mr. Wright. We're, uh, we're just going around, going around and round in circle. Now then, Mr. Powers, please continue with your testimony. Let's talk about the tip. Yep, yep. Yep, he turned around. Tell me more about this tip, sir. The defendant is a huge star. He can afford. Why am I talking like that still? The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Oh, um, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify for the court? About how much would you say the defendant gave to the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. Then how do you know it was a lie? What if it was just a stack of ones? You give him 50 and bucks. Why is that? <laughs> 50, 50 bucks in ones. So what? Because he gave the bellboy a really bad roll of cash. A roll of cash? Yeah. Uh, well. How interesting! That certainly was a generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. That can hardly be called a tip, Your Honor. Hmm. Judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. Oh fuck, wait, what? Now I'm just paranoid thinking about what all these options actually mean under the context of what oh, no. we're doing. <laughs> What am I doing? Stalin. Right now, you're yeah. defending Matt and buying time. Okay, so I I want to I want to object. Yes, raise an objection and yeah. The defendant is a superstar. That kind of tip is typical fare for people like him. Are you saying that all superstars are super spenders? If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I stand around here prosecuting? He's got a point. I don't even get paid. 
the little rolls of cash for all my hard work. Hmm. So there's a pro. <coughs> So supposing that roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, your honor. <laughs> Payment? Isn't it obvious? For the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida. Then, then the bellboy the witness saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Hold your horses now, Mr. Edgeworth. You don't have any proof of this. Do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the card Shelley de Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelley de Killer? He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I am certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelley De Killer. Really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, no, nothing. Nothing just clicks in my head. I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually. I saw the bellboy again later on the uh, later on that night. Will no. What? Will no. Will stop. <laughs> Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> right away. <laughs> we're, we're trying to stall here, man. Powers, you son of a bitch. <laughs> This, this time, I was in the hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. That's going to be an interesting one to press. What were you doing in there? I was <laughs> peeing! Why? That's I drank water! Wait, when I saw the bellboy, I saw earlier came out of the room, come out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Carita's room. Now that I think about it, the bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm, I'm sure. Will! Will, look at me! Stop! <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean... <laughs> Thank you very much. That is all we need for now. Huh? I'm not done. <laughs> There's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. De Killer. Then we shall see. Hmm. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if the bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Objection, 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 objection! I object! <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Huh, 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 huh. This is no laughing matter. I don't laugh, I'm gonna cry! <laughs> Stop Damn. laughing! I'm gonna cry! <laughs> now look what you've done, I'm crying now. <laughs> and what time was it? Oh, uh, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony around 8 p.m., right? <laughs> I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that, and then I came back. Then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8 10 by that time? <laughs> You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Power? <laughs> Sorry, but I don't usually catalog what time I go take a piss. Is it? 
I, I, I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say my congrats. The, that's a funny line to me, because I remember in high school, I, ha I had a small enough bladder that I had to kind of keep in mind like what time it was at all times, because I had to schedule when I would take breaks between classes to take a piss. So my daily schedule was kind of like class, 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 lunch, piss, class, piss, class, class, piss. And I did it the same way every time, every day, five days a week. Which I know is weird, but I kind of did catalog every time I went to the bathroom. The more you know. <laughs> yeah, the more you know. I also have no shame in talking about weird stuff, so yeah, whatever. I think weird anecdotes is uh, what makes LPs interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform, after all. But you see, well, he had those stitches in his face. Ugh. So I'm sure it's the same guy that was talking with Matt. Is that even his real face? It's a mask! He peels it off, but the stitches are still there on a different face. He's got layers. <laughs> yes. Hmm. So which room did the bellboy come out of? Of course, I right. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The victim's room, huh? Yeah. The one with all the really pretty flowers and teddy bears. So many bears. Bears, bears, bears. Which, where was one's room, all right? Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? You think a strategically mouthed help me would get me help? <laughs> I need help. Uh, so what exactly was so out of place about him? <laughs> right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? It's the only way I know how to smile anymore. <laughs> Maybe because I have no idea what damage you think he's gonna say next? <laughs> well... Oh boy, it was empty handed. Empty handed? The, the bell boy was. was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart and he wasn't holding a tray either. You could call it a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm. I agree, that is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers' testimony slide, or...? No, well, it's just... We gotta Boy. waste time, right? Yeah. Just fucking... Yeah. whatever. Boy, it's one last time! There's nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy! <laughs> really, it really is. There really, really isn't! If you two are done being school children... If you two are done being school children, me. No, we're not, Mr. Edgeworth. Bellboys are for room service. There is no reason for them to be empty-handed, ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness's previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Ugh, Edgeworth. You gonna do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see. Very well. The court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Being school children, here. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. If you think about it, an amended testimony is good because it's another avenue for us to fucking stall. Uh, yes, and, and, and I really think Edgeworth is doing this to simultaneously buy time and make it easier to nail the killer. Yeah, no, this is totally like a, he's giving us more testimony to latch on to installed, but as soon as it's time, it's like, boom, fuck you. <laughs> yes, oh hey, this is everything here. This one is kind of easy to fight, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. And they have to put it in the actual testimony for you to be able to fight it because of the game's mechanics. Yeah. So you're saying that it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed? 
<laughs> yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy... He was holding a tray in his hand. There was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Um, pretty sure it was tomato juice. If we could come up with some sort of reason as to why he would come out empty-handed... He delivered the tomato juice and therefore had nothing in his hands! What the fuck? <laughs> some sort of proof. Then I think we can dodge the bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. So I present the wine glass. Dun, 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 dun. Did one of the crime scene photos have a picture with, like, the tomato juice in it, or...? Yeah. 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 This one does. With yeah. a tray that he was carrying it on. Yeah, the tray, the juice, and the glass. Should I, so should I present the wine glass or this picture? Your call. Yeah, but I don't make good calls. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Powers. Sometimes they also set the game to allow multiple different pieces of evidence to work. That's fair, yeah. <laughs> yes. You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it just might be true. <laughs> Is he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches in. <laughs> you of all people shouldn't judge by appearances, man! So, I a baseball has like stitches! A... Come on, I just look Are like you saying all baseballs lying. are suspicious because they have stitches? What the yes. fuck? Snitches get stitches. Snitches get stitches. What? Wait, I can't yeah. say head court. <laughs> no. Well, that's also, I mean, what about him being empty handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> this is the crime scene. Sorry, uh, I had to check something. There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Karita's body. The liquid inside the glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on top of the table in the lower right corner here, anyone can clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Karita's room. He left a tray in the room, which is why he was empty handed when he left. Uh, but, but, that would mean that the bellboy ha had, <laughs> had seen and left a dead body in the room. No. Ah, but you can prove that Mr. Karita, but can you prove that Mr. Karita was already dead at that time? Um, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes. Uh, I blame you for letting for leading me down this route. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? <laughs> is there? The bellboy was empty-handed, or should I say, empty-handed? Pardon. I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I almost forgot. Huh? W what? The bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah. Clint's black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves? <laughs> Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Ah, boy, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. Alright, gotta focus. I can't lax here. Can't get lax here. 
So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Oh God, Mr. Bright. That bellboy was wearing black leather gloves. That clearly makes him evil. So a football is made of leather. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they're made of leather? <laughs> but that man, <laughs> but that man received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he, then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. But did they fit? <laughs> she was wearing them. I know. <laughs> I don't think, uh, th think that even someone like myself can believe he was just a regular bellboy. You think that beard looks good? So I think you can believe anything, Your Honor. <laughs> well, I am the judge, so I can believe what I want. <sighs> it seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> After leaving Juan's room, the pro boy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. Ah! <laughs> he, he gave something to the person inside the room. <laughs> the old guy just left, not even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room. Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven! Hmm. I'm really getting to do the the incredulously high-pitched voice this time. Like, a lot. <laughs> no. But in, like, literally any other case, powers would be, like, the thing we needed. Like, yeah. he's all it's literally- fucked. In the everything. other case, we'd be like, boom, this motherfucker's got it. <laughs> yes, he, 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 is, he saw literally everything, but now it's like, damn you, shut up! You're so helpful, Powers, you son of a bitch! <laughs> uh, it's like we're getting a taste at playing as a prosecutor. I hate it! <laughs> uh, I think it's safe to say that, that we can no longer just consider this bellboy to be normal. But then again, what is normal? <laughs> Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, your honor. <laughs> Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> pay under, maybe a poor underpaid action star. <laughs> Even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I, I think the point is, uh, uh, where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, uh, from the door to the bathroom with my, uh, uh, with, with my le left eye showed a sneaky spy light. Uh -huh. I, I knew he was spying! Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? Yes. What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. You know, court feels like a much more pleasant affair with Edgeworth in it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shitty circumstances aside, at least I'm not getting You're whipped. You're not getting whipped constantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting verbally whipped, not physically whipped. That's fine. I can handle that. I said, hold it. Uh, okay. 
Okay. That's better. Ahem. What am I holding? What kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, okay. Hmm, I should probably ask him only one question at a time. The something... I think if we ask about the person inside, there's a pretty good chance it leads to Matt. Which yeah, we don't I want. This something. So I'm gonna ask about the something. He gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? <laughs> if I remembered what it was, I wouldn't call it a something, would I? But that implies that that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Uh, I think it was something kind of small. This is an incredibly crucial piece of information. Please try to remember what it was. Oh, I'll try. In the meantime, let's talk of another point. Namely, what the bellboy did next. Oh, so it gave the person inside the room the thing. Hold it! Where did this bellboy go after he left Mr. Engard's room? Hmm. He opened the door to, to Viola Hall. <laughs> it's in there. Who knows after that, right? <sighs> I do. <laughs> Did you see anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary at that time? Oh, yeah. I saw that one thing. What? He saw something else? They were out of toilet paper, man. It I was did. terrible. I had to use the seashells. Yes, I had to use, I had to use the seashells, man. How do you the even seashells. use the seashells, man? <laughs> there was this jittery alien with a ray gun. It was watching one store, like some sort of stalker. Hmm? <laughs> uh, I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Test Mr. Power's testimony just now was just as vague as his first. It's a little troublesome, isn't it? But I'm sure if you press him enough, everything will become clear. Although, that just makes it harder on us, doesn't it? Uh, talk about a lose-lose situation. <laughs> Bless you, Mia. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess we'll go to that one and try the other piece of information. Yeah. Yep. So who took this something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face? <laughs> yeah. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Her Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it what what was the bellboy handed off. That was the suicide note. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. 
<laughs> well, let's see. Uh, hmm. I think it was. No. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. <laughs> yes, sir. Now what the fuck do I do? Wooden statue? <laughs> if I saw it again, I could say it's so wooden. Like, like this? Objection! What was the point of that pregnant pause? <laughs> where, did, where did the objection come from? Well, speak up! Uh, it was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I'm feeling that something bad is gonna happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, Shit. you have something to say, please spit it out. Oh, that seems like a bad idea, actually. Why did I do that? <sighs> yes, Your Honor. Hey, Phoenix. Deep breath. Mr. Powers, there's something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Right? You really figured it out? I got really excited when I realized what it was, and then I'm like, wait, should I have even shown this? I mean... Hmm, I recall we found this at Matt Engard's mansion. Yep, I should have shown this. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope yeah. this is okay. <laughs> uh, at the defendant's house. I I really hope like right. Meanwhile, Gumshoe is like kicking down some, kicking down the guy's door and like doing something. Oh, I think I fucked up. Oh no! Why did what I do that? What does this mean? <laughs> it's simple, Your Honor. Chili the Killer assassinated Juan Corita in his room. And then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. The the the, the bear being found in, in Mr. Edgard's mansion would mean It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Engard is Day Killer's client. Order, order, order! I said order! Mr. Wright, yeah, th th this is most un this is this is the most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah, fuck, dude. Why did I do that? I don't know. Why did I do that? Why? Why did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Shit. Sorry, Mia. No, it's all right. Your judgment was sound. Actually. <laughs> I figured the bear would come up. But she's not disappointed in me. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth, Edgeworth would have. Friend? Uh, I almost forgot that he knew about it, too. Hmm. I think it's clear that, 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 that there is no need to continue this trial. I, I can't let this happen. I have to do something. Has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright. What questionable point would you like to explore further? I-I-I-I-I-I uh, guess it's, it's what would either be the bear because we know nothing about it or the person in the person who received it because we literally know no idea who they are uh. <laughs> the person who received the bear because maybe we can figure out who it is it, you know there was one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear and that is the fuck that is the identity of who received the bear He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear, 
We can't be sure of. Ah ha! Eh? Hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Powers? If you're if you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Oh, uh, yeah, this is sorry. Actually, so uh, I remembered. Oh, uh, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. Don't say racing jacket. Don't say racing that, jacket. That arm. It was the Nicole Samurai's arm. I swear it. Oh, we still have an out. We do. We yes. do. We do. We, we have an out. Do. We have an we out. Do. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. We can keep. You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? How could you forget that? It's made of metal. <laughs> yeah, sure. It was the Nickel Samurai. Order. Order! It looks like you've dug your own grave. Yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And, as we all know, Matt Engard is the Nickel Samurai. Th thanks to the defense, we've made that all the clearer. What am I supposed to do now? Mia, help! You don't have time to act lost. You got to find another angle to attack this from. Hurry. Now, I will bring this cross-examination- Your Honor! Again, Mr. Wright. We've already mo moved any and all questions- <laughs> from many and all questionable areas of this testimony. It's about time you were removed from this court, Mr. Wright. It's time you were removed from this court. I have to find something. Even one more little point will do. There are... There's still questions left unanswered! What are you trying to pull? Again. <laughs> oh, well, we can't have that. I, I, again. Okay, right. the bear. <laughs> what casual kind of point would you like to explore? Let's talk about the bear! The bear, Your Honor! I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable! Confidence, confidence, right? Confidence! <laughs> The bear, Mr. Wright. This was found at Mr. Engard's mansion. However, Mr. Engard was arrested at the hotel that night. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh. I think your honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mr. Engard who took this bear to his mansion. Well, why, that, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. When do you? It's always up to me. Bring up the fine details of the case. It's there Phoenix's is no way time-wise for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Phew. Disaster averted, it looks... You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Are you sure? I'm trying really hard, man. Ugh. I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Engard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time, he was the killer. The killer and Engard were working together, so to speak. And the killer was hiding at Engard Mansion, as its butler. What a bold move! The bear figurine was brought back to Engard Mansion by the killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, Engard had him do so. 
I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much! Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I think we've heard enough. We know what what know why this bear, bear, bear figurine well, was at the defendant's mansion, as well as who it was who received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit this murder was Matt Engard. I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I shall now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright? You could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? <laughs> Same scum! That's what I will do. Objection! There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. I don't know what he's getting at. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at the Engard mansion. However, it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I am saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Sorry, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, this is the only, yeah. Who else would be in Engard's room? Who else would be in the Nickel Samurai costume? Who else could? Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we proved earlier that she was, that she had her own costume. Yes. Is this all you have? Yes. <laughs> now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's true client, and therefore the real murderer? It was this attorney's badge! All along! <laughs> uh, where is her profile at? Sorry, Adrian. Adrian Andrews? Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt Engard for the crime. By wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Uh... Then... <laughs> The, the nickel samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. Engard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then... Finding this figurine at Mr. Engard's mansion. It was a well laid trap. Well, well, that bit. It, it, it was a well laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. I'm just with this trial. Can they uh, tell Edgar could did it? I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the guilt on someone else! Yeah, unbelievable! That's not something pretty, it's murder of all things! This is to save Maya, this is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. 
Order. 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 All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. Aww. <laughs> I know what that really means, you son of a bitch. Yeah. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. <laughs> Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered. Why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specially... did specially bring it... Oh, fuck me. The killer did specially bring that bear to Endguard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would this be? Who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. Oh no. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I'm gonna feel bad. <laughs> I feel terrible now. I see. I'm such a piece of shit. She's gonna this hate me. Save Maya. <laughs> Gotta save Maya. Gotta save Maya. Well, the, the court will take a short 10-minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. Ooh, I don't feel good about anything that's happening here. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? Fuck. You. Yes, admit to holding someone hostage in front of two police officers. But I never thought near desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Fuck. You. <laughs> oh, I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick. Pearls, where's Mia? I don't know. Really strong power suddenly called her away. Great, I'm fucking boned! I'm boned! It's over! I'm boned! I'm boned! I'm, I'm gonna boned. kick her in the ankles now. Yeah, kick him! Go for it, I don't give a shit! Okay! Kick, 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 Mr. Nick, your phone is... It's from Gumshoe! Hello? Hello? How's it going? Uh, have you been... Uh, been hanging... Been hanging it in there, pal? Yeah, sorta. We just barely found something to latch onto. <laughs> That's good, pal. What about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where the killer and my are? Uh, um... We still don't have any leads, but... What?! We don't have any more time! If we ju just had one, even a, even a single clue could be really helpful. Come on, pal! Kick! I was only... <laughs> I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself, I've got to keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. But if I just run out of luck this time... Is all our hope for not? A tent. That's Mia. A tent. Huh? A tent? I could see a circus tent. M mia Looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I could see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gumshoe, is there a circus in town right now? Uh, 
there's only one, pal. The very big circus. Maya is somewhere within a 300 foot radius of the main tent. What? what? Uh, okay. Hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map. About, about 300 foot, foot, foot radius from the main tent. Hurry! And? And? I could see a mailbox under the window, just outside. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Hmm. Okay. What else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so. I... I heard her in... An, an old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay. Just hang in there. There's a little water, pal. Wish us luck. Wish you luck. Wish me luck. Good luck! I'll call you later. So don't let your battery die. Okay, pal? I'll be in court. And I can't... And the battery died. Oh, Mia. Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Come shoot, please hurry! Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? No! <laughs> it's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this! I just have to make this trial last a little longer! To be continued? Motherfuckers. No. <laughs> I guess I'm just gonna save in the start of this... I'm just gonna save right away. As soon as it, as soon as it goes. Shut up, your honor. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. I have to save, your honor. Oh, please continue. <laughs> so, next time, hopefully we're wrapping this up. I don't know. Seems like we're coming down to the wire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. bye. 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 Bye.